Hello everyone, this is Mohamed Yakub. I hope you're all having a great day. This is another video update and it's going to be for the digital to analog converter tutorial this time. The STM3204 has got two analog outputs with an output range of 0 to 3 volts. So you can output a sinusoidal signal, a triangular signal or any random analog output as long as it's between 0 and 3 volts. And the first five minutes of this video I will show you how to implement this with uh, CubeMX it's uh, particularly useful for people who just want to do things very quickly and cannot bother to watch 15 minutes video. And in the second part, I will show you how to do this without CubeMX using Hull Libraries directly. And possibly in the third bit, I might show you how to do this with a direct register access method. So let's make a start. Alright, first things first, open CubeMX and click on your project. And select your board, minus team 30 or 4 or 7. And here we've got to enable our analog output pin and to do this expand digital to analog converter and select one of the channels i'll select output one and this turned out to be pa4 so we've got to take our analog output on pa4 now let's go to configuration window and see if there's anything we can change on digital analog converter uh, configurations uh, so there are only two main settings output buffer is enabled by default and the trigger we don't want to trigger it continuously, so we'll leave things as default and click OK. Now ready to generate source code, click on this icon, and give your project a name, and select the right IDE, and click OK. And on Carl Microvision, we need to expand this folder, and application user, and open the main. Uh, and in here, the first thing we need to do is we need to start the digital to analog converter, the function called how DAC start and it's a normal start without DMA and this takes two parameters the DAC handle type diff and it's defined here by CubeMX just HDAC and then the channel because there are two channels channel 1 and 2 so I've got to say channel 1 and that's how to start the DAC and then we need to output a value to the digital to analog converter and the function is pretty straightforward too it's called how DAC set value and this function takes a few parameters the first one as usual the DAC handle type diff and then the channel which is channel 1 again uh, and it takes the data alignment this is an interesting one 8 bit I'm gonna output the data in 8 bits I want to align them to the right and then the data that I want to output so this data has to be a byte because I specified the data width will be 8 bits so I've got to output the value in byte and then at the output it will appear as analog so the, the way I like to do this is I like to define two variables one floating point variable which I specify the value in voltage and I want to output something like 2.2 volt because the range is from 0 to 3 volt then I'll define another variable that will convert from floating point into byte so that I can output it properly with this function so value byte and to convert the value from float to byte I've got to do this in begin2 uh, otherwise it's not going to compile properly so to do to convert it from floating point to byte uh, I've, I've just got to match the range so so voltage divided by the maximum which is 3 volt multiplied by the maximum 255 at the output and this will convert the value from 3 volt range into 255 range I'll typecast it to byte as well and that's simply how to do it now I've, got, I've just got to pass this variable to the function and now when I do this I should at, at the output at pin PA4 I should get 2.2 volt so let me compile it, upload it to the board and see if we're going to get the correct value So we indeed got 2.2 volt at the output. Well, we got 2.17, but that was close enough. The tiny difference is just in the reference voltage not being exactly 3 volt. So that's simply how you do it with the uh, QMX. Uh, if that's all you're looking for, you may stop the video here. But I'm going to carry on. I'll show you how to do this without QMX. This second part will be very useful for people who want to know more about the Hull driver and how things work in the background. So. To do, the, to do this without CubeMX, we need to do everything in Carl Microvision. The first thing we need to do is to go to Project and click on New Microvision Project. We've got self location for our folder. I'll create a new folder here. I'll call it DAC1 NoCube. 
and all the project files will be stored in this location I'll call my project act one no cube as well now we need to select our board we've got to go to ST microelectronics and STM 3204 and the board is 07 VGT of course and click OK now we need to select the software components the first thing we need to enable is this MSIS core uh, we need to go to device and enable the startup software component this is extremely important this will start up the device and set up the clocks and everything to default and we need to enable uh, digital to analog converter um, well I missed one thing we need to enable the classic too and this depend on few software components that we need to enable so when you click resolve they will be added uh, automatically um, now we need to add our digital to analog converter software component and this require a DMA although we're not going to use DMA but we're going to include it too that's everything we need to set up on the software components now we're ready to write our main and as you can see, Kyle Microvision generated a few software components for us. These are mainly the HAL driver and the startup file. But it didn't add a main folder for us. So I need to include my main file. And you click on new file. It's a C file and you call it main. And in the main file, the first thing you need to do is to include the HAL library header file. And this is stm32 of 4xx slash underscore HAL dot h. And this would include all of the HAL library software components altogether. Next thing, I need to add my main function. And it's int main void no parameters and the infinite while loop. And now we need to configure our TPI open and our digital to analog converter peripheral. So we need to enable PA4 and set it to analog. And we also have got to do some configuration to the digital to analog converter like enabling the output buffer and disabling the uh, timer trigger so let's do this and I'll do this in a separate functions as usual uh, void tbi or config to configure the pin and this one takes no parameters so you put void and the second function is void uh, dac config so the tbi or config I'll define it at the bottom here it's pretty simple and straightforward all we need to do here is first to enable TPIO port A clock and to enable TPIO A clock there's a complex named function and we can find it in TPIO uh, driver file and how to use this driver that's the function we copy it and we need to select the port so we are enabling port A so I need to replace X by A the next thing I need to call in the function that does the initialization TPIO init just like what I described in the driver, and this function takes two parameters, the port and the TPIO init type diff. So I first have got to enable a or define a TPIO init type diff, and I'll call it my pin init. So my pin dot init, I've got to select the pin, so it's going to be pin four. So TPIO pin four, and I need to select the mode. These are the two main initialization parameters that I need to select so the mode is going to be analog because it's an analog output control uh, control tab uh, for the auto text and I need to select analog I'm also going to do the no pull up no pull down just to make sure it's not there's no pull up and pull down enabled now I need to pass those parameters to the function so that the initialization will take place so the first parameter of this function is the port and it's TPIO port A and the second parameter is a pointer to the TPIO init type diff so I've got to put the ampersand sign and the name of the type diff and this is simply how to enable port A and set it to analog and now we need to configure our digital to analog converter device and we do this in the second function so I've got to copy it and define it at the bottom here And in here we need to enable digital analog converter clock. And to enable the digital analog converter clock, it's a similar function to this, except it says back in here. Next I need to do some of the configurations. And I need to define a digital analog converter type diff, and it's described in the DAC driver here. Um, you define a handle type diff and pass it to this function. So I'll copy this function. This is usually called last, similar to the GPIO init function. 
and DAC handle to IBDF. But I need to define this globally because I will need to use it in the main to set the DSET and the converter value. And I'll call it my DAC handle. And we can use this to set up the DSET and the converter parameter. There aren't many anyway. So dot instance, we just need to set this instance to DAC. That's all we need to do, apparently. And now I can call the help DSET and the converter uh, init function to set this initialization. So the next thing we need to do is to configure the DAC channel setting because as I said, as I mentioned in Cubamix, the DSET analog converter has got two channels, uh, channel 1 and channel 2. So we need to do some configuration of the channel, mainly to select channel 1. And again, the function is described in the driver. It's in the DAC driver rather. It's help a DAC config channel. And we call it at the end as usual. And this takes uh, three parameters. It takes the handle type diff, the DAC handle type diff, and the DAC channel handle type diff, so DAC channel config type diff. I need to define this locally though. I'll call it my DAC channel conf. Very long name. And for the DAC channel config, the first thing I need to do is I need to enable the output buffer. Then I need to disable the uh, trigger, just like what I did in Cubamix. That's pretty much everything we need to do. Now I can pass in this to the DAC config channel function so that the configuration will take place. This function expects three parameters. The first one is the normal DAC handle type diff, so I still need to use that. The second one is the um, channel config type diff, so this one. I need to pass them as pointers, so I've got to do the ampersand sign. And the third parameter is the channel, and this is DAC channel 1 because we're using PA4 as our output. Uh, and that's all for the DAC configuration. Now I can call in these functions in the main so that the configuration parameter will be uh, executed. So the first function I want to call is uh, as actually the hull init function. This will initialize all the parameters. It's a good practice to call it as I always mention. It's called hull init. And then I need to call in my functions that I just defined. Now I need to start the digits and the converter. And the function is called hull DAC start, just like what we did uh, when we did the Cubamix part too. Uh, so what I'm going to do at this stage, I'm going I'm to copy everything over from Cubamix because you already saw these parts. And that is uh, everything really. Um, now we should be ready to compile and upload to the board. Uh, and by the way, excuse my flatmate, he's having his uh, shisha at the background. So let me compile it and upload it to the board. Compiled successfully without any errors or warnings. Now we're ready to upload it to the board. Click on this. Okay, another problem. Looks like the uh, debugger is uh, wrong. So go to device for options and you need to select the right debugger. Go to debug window and select stealing debugger for the Steam 304 discovery board. And also go to settings and enable something called trace. That should solve the problem. And select the uh, core clock to 16 megahertz, similar to the STM clock. And now upload it to the board. Perfect, it's uploading successfully now. Now let's have a look at the board and see the uh, multimeter and see what the output voltage is. And we expect somewhere near 1.6 volt. And this indeed worked as well. Although the value we get in was 1.4 volt, which is slightly inaccurate, but I wouldn't worry much about this for now. Um, so yeah, that's how you do it with hull drivers directly without the help of uh, Cubamix. Um, and now on the third bit, I will quickly show you how to do this with uh, direct register access. This would be quite useful for people who want to know more about the architecture and structure of the Cortex on 4 device. And for the direct register access, I'm not going to do it line by line. I'll just copy the code as a whole into line. It's not too complex for the digital and the converter turned out to be quite simple actually. So here's the code. Um, the first thing is quite obvious. So function prototype definition and variable declarations. So let me go to the TPIO config function. And what I'm doing in here, I'm enabling TPIO, TPIO port A clock. Um, this is through the RCC registers. I will go through these really quickly. So when you go to the, the reference manual, and search for RCC registers. Here they are. 
go to AHPE in our register 1 and this has got port A and this zero bit so when you write 1 to this register you enable clock of port A and this is what I'm doing in here and the OR sign is just to so that I can change bit field 0 without affecting the other bit fields that's why I do the OR sign and then setting PA4 as analog and this is in the TPIO registers so you do the same thing as I did you go to TPIO registers what you will find here and go to TPIO port uh, model register and on this one you can select which pin it is and in our case it's pin 4 and when you write 1 1 to this it will set it to analog so either analog input or analog output and that's what this line is doing so it's setting 1 1 through field 4 we multiply by 2 because each field has got 2 bits and similarly for the DAC config the first thing is we enable the DAC clock the DAC peripheral clock and it's a different clock than the port A clock it's not AHP it's APP1 and you can actually find out in the uh, steam board clock uh, diagram and just like in here so port A is triggered by clock AHP1 scroll down you'll see that DAC is triggered by APP1 clock so you need to enable this clock and that's what this line is doing so for the RC so as i shown you but through a different clock we enable field 29 to enable DAC let me go through it quickly in fact just so that you have a better idea so the RCC APP1 uh, clock which is this one you see field 29 is to enable the DAC uh, peripheral and this is exactly what this line of code is doing and then uh, these two line is just to configure the uh, these are to clear out all the other settings to clear the interrupt enable DMA and things like this through the DAC control register let me take you to the DAC control register it's this one on page 445 the DAC control register control things like um, DMA interrupt, mask amplitude, selection, wave generation, but we're not using the wave generation feature here, and some other features. So what we're doing by these two lines of code is, <coughs> is setting all of the other settings to uh, zero because we don't want to use them, but except this one, this one is to enable the DAC channel one. We will use this later on. Uh, and for these uh, strange looking operations, if you're not familiar with them, just Google something called uh, bitwise or bit masking. I'm not sure about the name, but that's as far as I remember from my placement at TBG. Okay. Going up to the main code, uh, in the main we uh, call the function, the config function. This is a regular operation. We convert the floating point to unsigned integers, similar thing. Then starting the digital to analog converter. This is through the DAC control register, the similar one. So all this is doing is setting this bit to 1. So to enable the digital to analog converter, channel 1 of course. Uh, if you're using channel 2, then you've got to enable the second one in bit 16. Uh, then we're outputting the DAC data as 8 bit through the DAC holding register 8 bit right aligned 1 for channel. And you can find this out in here and the just below the control register, a few registers at the bottom. These are the other holding register if you're outputting data in 12 bit. But if you're outputting the data as 8 bit, then you output it to this register. And that's exactly what I'm doing in here. Uh, and that is everything for the uh, direct register access method of programming the digital to analog converter. So let me compile the code, upload it to the board, and convince you that it does actually work the same. Perfect. It does work quite well. We got 1.76, even better than the Hull driver one, uh, and that is quite close to 1.8. So that's all for this video. That's all I want to show you. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.